people today's colorful thrift flip makeovers are brought to you by this napkin i didn't want to go too bright but something about the pastels in this napkin just called out to me when i was recently shopping i picked these napkins up from Hobby Lobby. They were 40% off, just in case you're wondering where I got them from. And this thrifted gem here, I picked up quite some time ago. It's been hiding in my stash. It's in really good condition and it's not that dirty. It doesn't have a lot of dings. So really all we got to do is clean this up, sand it down and get to upcycling it. To clean up our pieces, I'm going to use my favorite Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner. If you guys don't have access to a Dixie Belle retailer, you can pick this Krug Cutter up at Walmart for under $10 and it does a great job. I used this before I started using Dixie Belle. And the reason you want to clean your pieces is so you don't have any crusty bits between your old finish and your new finish and possibly wear your new finish off, especially if you're reselling pieces. Truth be told, I kind of wing this part, okay? But there are directions on the bottle. You do what the bottle says. Don't do as I do, you know what I mean? <laughs> do what the bottle says. When you've been doing this, as long as I have, you figure out what works for you and then you roll on with it. I did take a wet paper towel and go back over to get some of that residue from the cleaner off. And then I took a 220 grit sandpaper just to kind of knock some of the raised edges and to prep our surface for paint. And then I went over this with a microfiber cloth to get any of the crusty bits from our sanding off. I grabbed these three spray paint colors from Walmart because they matched my napkin and I wanted to, for a change, <laughs> keep the color the same throughout the video. For this project, I'm going to use this one right on our house and for my spray paint lovers. If you're going to spray paint something and then use chalk paint over it, make sure you let it dry at 24 hours. I'm going to show you why in just a minute. Since I'm going to be decoupaging around this house, it's good to have a nice white background. However, I also want to add some distressing and have some colors and layers and all the things. And as I'm doing this, I'm like, yep, yeah, we need to apply a nice color of chalk paint underneath which luckily for me, I had this agave, which was really super close to the spray paint color. And I was super happy about that because I really like using chalk paint on pieces like this. And I was out of Dixie Belle paint that matched and I need to stop by and grab some more of those paints. But one chalk paint I really do recommend if you're gonna flip pieces and you don't have access to high-end chalk paints is Waverly. And you can usually grab that offline or pick it up from your local Walmart. Don't mind me just grabbing some of the bristles because this chippy brush was shedding. And real quick before I paint over the whole thing with our white chalk paint, I want to show you what the piece looks like with just the white on the wood section and then how we have that beautiful color over the rest of the piece. How when we sand it, the color is going to pop through with the white and just give us a different level with our piece. If you want it just the wood to pop through the white, then just apply three or four layers of the white chalk paint and you'll be good. I only needed to apply one layer of the white chalk paint over this beautiful color because it gave a really nice base coat. If I had all chalk paint colors, I would not have grabbed spray paint, but this was the best way for me to match everything. And I spray painted the house and some of the area around the house. Remember when I said you want to make sure the spray paint is completely dry before you chalk paint over it? This is why. I did let this dry for 45 minutes, but somehow the white chalk paint still activated the spray paint underneath and it started to smoosh. So I had to let this sit overnight before I could continue carrying on the project before I ruined it. Now it's the next day and all is right with the world, so it's napkin time. I had two napkins here because I wasn't sure if I was going to use repeat patterns from the napkin or however, I wasn't just using the whole napkin over the piece. I decided I wanted to tear this up and do it in little sections so I could create my own design. To start off, we're going to need to get them sneaky layers behind our decorative top layer. And lucky for me, there was only one layer for me to get off here and it was really visible from the corner. So I just pulled that sucker right on off of there. There is nothing wrong with using the entire napkin if that's what you choose to do. I of course wanted to create my own design on the back here using different sections in the napkin. Now normally I would just go ham and tear off little parts. But since the design was really specific with the dark black edges where the leaves were, I wanted to make sure I was incorporating them with each section that I was placing on our piece. So to get a really defined tear, I took a paintbrush, 
with a little bit of water and just traced the sections that I wanted and pulled them apart. This is not my favorite way to tear, mostly because I hate waiting for the water to dry on the edges of the napkin because when the napkin is wet and you try to Mod Podge it around the edges, you could lose part of the design that you want to hold on to. And the reason this is an issue is because you do not want to take a wet napkin and lay it down on Mod Podge. It is a recipe for tears and rips. So it's just like an extra step having to wait. Some people say it only takes two minutes. But that's not been my experience. That napkin usually takes an additional 15 to 20 minutes to dry around the edges, depending on how much water is wet on there. But you do you people. I just want to let y'all know what works for me and why I do what I do. And just to give you an idea, like, look how wet this one section is on that napkin. It that, mm, I let all these dry for 10 minutes. And there were a few spots that still needed to dry, so I took the heat gun to them. I cheated. Okay, now moving on. If you're piecing your own design together using a napkin or several napkins, I recommend taking the time to place them out and get a vision. Once you're happy with that, it's time to bring in the Mod Podge. Or whatever medium you really want to use to be able to do this. I personally like Mod Podge and I wanted a gloss finish. I have this on hand, so that's what I'm using. And... A fan brush. It's one of my favorite ways to decoupage with a napkin. Now I do want to share with you a lot of people ask about these little perforated edges around the napkin. For the most part you're not going to be able to see them once you apply the napkin but if you want to guarantee it go ahead and iron them suckers out. If you got to press, press them on down and it will flatten them out even more so they're not noticeable and you can use the entire napkin. I like to say less is more whenever you're decoupaging a napkin or a thin piece of rice paper. And the reason I say that is because the more Mod Podge you have when you're doing something thin, the easier it is to just rip the piece. So I'll do little section by little section like this and apply as I go and then add more. This helps reduce wrinkles and bubbles. I will tell you the most effective way to decrease the chances of that is using the iron on method. I also like to share that when people recommend that in the comments, I create content for you to watch and I create a lot of content each week. I do not have the ability to wait around a lot for the iron on method. It takes extra time waiting. I pick and choose what I wait for when I'm creating content and it's just easier and quicker for me. This works really well for me using my little sponge here. This is a dry sponge in case you're wondering and you can pick these up from Walmart or order them off Amazon. Nothing really special about these sponges. They're also in my decoupage kits that I sell on my website. I like to use these instead of cling wrap often because they catch the Mod Podge that does squeeze through the napkin and it just presses it down. Sometimes when I use cling wrap, there'll be too much Mod Podge and then it tears with the cling wrap and then the cling wrap gets all gooky and I got to keep switching that out. Using the sponge just kind of absorbs and then I can actually reuse the sponge later on down the line to apply paints on stencils and things like that. I'll cut them suckers up and just keep reusing. While this is drying, we're gonna add on our little Dollar Tree stencil. We're gonna just put on the R Story section. I'm gonna tape that down with some painter's tape because we're gonna use my Mod Podge hack here that I enjoy using to avoid some bleed through. So it looks really nice. I'm a little lazy and I don't like busting out my Cricut unless I have to. <laughs> Even though those vinyl pieces work really well to reduce bleed through, this kind of helps cut that down. And all we're doing is just taking a little bit of Mod Podge and going over the stencil, letting that dry. And if you need another layer, you go ahead and put that on. This actually seeps in around the gap, seals it up. And then when you go to put your color on, it just goes on top of where the Mod Podge is inside the stencil design. At least that's the theory. I'd be lying if I say there's sometimes that this doesn't work as perfect as I would like it to, but 95% of the time it does exactly what I expect it to do. You could leave this just how it is. Of course, I'm not going to because I'm extra seven days a week. I'm taking these little stencils I ordered off Amazon. I got a bunch in a pack for a couple bucks. I think it was 
it wasn't even that much. I don't even remember. Don't quote me on it. And I'm just tappity tap tap tapping all over this sucker because I think these look like roof pieces just to create that effect on here. I wasn't going for perfect. I love how this turned out. The next day I came back in with 120 grit sandpaper, sanded all the edges off and went over some sections where the paint and the napkin are because I wanted to incorporate some distressed looks with this piece. When I was happy with that, I took a really soft chippy brush with a little bit of white chalk paint to go over this napkin a bit and give it a dry brushing, mostly because I did not care for the fact that that napkin was not the same color as the white paint we have in the background. So this is just gonna make it look a little bit more cohesive. And because I just couldn't leave it alone, <laughs> I sanded down some sections to the wood so we seen that green paint pop through our base and some of the napkin areas. Now it's time to bring in our drill bit so we can make little holes here to pop in our little cup hooks for our key holder because that's what we're making here is a little key holder. And I highly recommend making little holes before you try to screw these in, especially if you struggle with hand grip strength like I do and grab a pair of pliers because that always makes it easier. And that's gonna be it for this piece. Seal it one up and you are all done. This video is part of the Make It Remain playlist I host every year on my channel where we bring you thrifting inspiration with new creators each week with different themes. And hopefully you get a lot of inspiration from it and meet some new content creators you love. We're also doing a giveaway for a $100 electronic Amazon gift card. We just want to give back to the community and let y'all know how much we appreciate you. And if you're interested in a chance to win that gift card, here's how you can do that. Each content creator participating this month is going going to have a code word somewhere in their video. You're going to need to collect all those words. There'll be 11 total. Hold on to all those code words because on May 27th, I am going to make a post on my community tab asking if you've collected all those code words. If you have, write yes in the comments and you'll have until June 1st to do that. On June 2nd, I'll announce the randomly selected winner and that winner will have to email me and tell me what all the code words were. And I do wanna apologize for any inconvenience. I do understand the terms for this giveaway are a little extensive. However, we've had some issues with scamming in the past and we're hoping to reduce that and be able to continue doing giveaways. Let's jump into the next project. Can I just say that it's not often I find a piece of glass and I'm like, I need to turn that into a candle. But that's how I felt about these pieces. I grabbed them for $1.99 a piece at my local community aid store. And I just knew that they would go perfect with my color scheme we had going on for this video. And for my ASMR lovers, I got your back. People, look how pretty these turned out. I'm so happy with the, <laughs> I love the color, it's gorgeous. Now let's bring in our soy wax. This was sent to me by a subscriber. Thank you so much, Rhonda. I actually really loved this stuff. She has heard me mention before my contents that I'm really eco-friendly with stuff like that, especially burning things in my house. And she wanted me to try this wax out and I absolutely love it. These little things I'm chopping up right here are just some branch bits I picked up in a pack. I don't know how to describe it. From Dollar Tree branch bits, okay? And we're just snipping up some little pieces. You could use potpourri if you want. I'm just kind of throwing something in the top of the candle because we're going to melt this wax in a really unconventional way. The wicks I'm using are hemp and I ordered them off of Amazon in case anyone's wondering. And I'm just using some hot glue to glue these down. Now this DIY is purely aesthetic. I do not plan on burning these. And no, I am not sure that burning anything and something you spray painted is a good idea for those that are gonna ask in the comments. <laughs> and before you start judging me because you just see me pouring this out, okay, we're not melting it. I want it to be clumpy. I want this to have a texture. I want these to look like bubbles, like in a little champagne Thing. listen okay this was the look I was going for stop judging me I feel it you melt your wax how you want to okay when you're happy with how much wax you have put in here just you know nip 
the tips of those wicks off to the size that makes sense for you. You could leave them as long as you want, but I wanted mine a little bit shorter. And now I'm just putting some of them bits in here. I wish I had some colored potpourri to make a little bit more colorful and I didn't. So this was where I was going with this. I wanted, listen, I wanted this to kind of look like champagne with fruit in the top little bits and that just didn't turn out necessarily okay when I was happy with that I brought in our heat gun because here's how we're going to melt our wax and make it look like there's bubbles on top you're just going to gently hover the heat gun at a safe distance away from your wax and be mindful that the wax is going to come flying out of your champagne glasses okay and it's going to go where it wants <laughs> including sticking to the side of your glass pieces and your fingers and all the things and it's not really a big deal however it is kind of fun <laughs> really had a good time with this little diy that i'm sharing with you guys and i highly recommend you doing it just because sometimes making a mess and creating things you've never done before is just therapeutic it might not look like I have fruit in the top of there, but it does look like some bubbles, <laughs> at least to me. I'm going to have to redo this again. I just honestly had way too much fun melting that wax like that. I'm going to definitely have to redo this at some point with a different DIY idea. This was just too much fun for me. This used to be a set. I've actually already dismantled the friend that goes along <laughs> with this piece. Let's have a small moment of silence for the friend that's missing. Okay, now moving on. As you can see, this piece is in really good condition, but we're only going to use the spindle pieces out of this. That's right. We're just going to clamp this one down and wiggle our ends off because lucky for me, these were not glued in here. However, as you can see, wiggling these suckers out of here is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I got the bright idea to grab a tool and instantly regretted it. Stupid thing. <laughs> Owie. Once I was done cussing that out, I wiggled the rest of the spindles out and grabbed a big old piece of styrofoam so I could plug holes in the styrofoam to be able to spray paint these standing up. I just felt like that was going to be quicker than having to lay them down and then rotate the spindles out. My code word for this video is Owie. While they're drying, it is time to find us a little circular piece. And this I had laying around, we're gonna paint it white. Why, you may ask? Because we are creating a little wind chime with these spindles. And we're gonna use this as a piece at the top that we connect everything through. I don't have the atomically correct names for all these things, okay? Here's our spindles, they're all dry. Now we need to put holes in everything and attach everything. Oh, and our bell which I had from some random thing down in my stash. And I decided to kind of bring that one in and paint it white to match our base. And in the process, I realized I needed all these little hook bits that I was going to have to finagle <laughs> to work to attach our rope because I want to use the nautical rope for that. So I used a pair of pliers to open them and to close them as I went and thought we're just gonna reuse the hook as well for the top part. Now it's time to bring in our drill so we can put little holes in our spindles. The size of the drill bit only matters according to the size of the item that you're gonna be shoving in the holes. And I mean that because, see how tiny this is? This is actually the smallest drill bit I had. If I had a smaller one, I would have went with that because we have to actually fill these holes a little bit. I'm gonna show you how we do that in just a second. Be very careful doing this. I also have a vice grip. I was gonna put these in there, but my vice grip tends to leave little indents, so I'd have to brace stuff and I already painted it, so I just figured I'm going to pray and hold this <laughs> and put these holes in here. Then I grabbed a larger drill bit, large enough to be able to feed our nautical rope through, and I grabbed a little shim as a you know backing to put our wood piece on. 
so I could draw holes straight through and not, you know, obviously put a hole in the table. I could have did this outside, but I was here and I figured cameras all set up instead of rearranging myself back outside just to drill a couple holes. We will just make do in here. And obviously if you have more spindles, you'll need more holes, but I only had three. So I just drilled three holes and then I grabbed the small drill bit again to draw a hole right through the center. And that's gonna be for the piece where we put our bell. So I, again, remember I said I had to take the little metal pieces apart. I finagled them <laughs> into a hook and a straight line. This next part is where I realized that the hole was bigger than my metal piece and how you can fix that. And a lot of times I'm using wood on wood and I'll use wood glue. But since I'm using metal and wood, I wanted to use something a little bit different as an adhesive. And I'm taking some Gorilla Glue gel and shoving it on into that hole. And then I'm going to grab some of our little bits that we have from where we drilled. We got the little sandy bits, you know, and attaching it to it and shoving down in that hole. This is going to fill the hole up and allow the glue to adhere to our metal, adhere to the little sandy bits and then adhere to our actual spindle on the inside here so it doesn't move. Then I just pulled parts of the nautical rope that I thought made sense for the size for the little wind chime here and started attaching all the pieces. And at the ends where I had the ropes, I took tacky glue and attached so this way that knot is not gonna come off at all. I did have trouble bending the end on our piece with the bell hand grip strength problems okay so to solve that issue I put some more Gorilla Glue gel and then wrapped more of that rope right around the top I let that sit for a couple minutes and we're covering over this anyway with some floral pieces you're not even going to see this and trust me people that is not moving it is on there so well to attach the florals I used hot glue and tacky glue and I really think this is super super cute how the top came out and the color is kind of match so I was really thrilled with that I don't do florals very often but I just felt like I wanted to create something a little shabby chicish with the colors on this piece for the rope center piece I attached three nautical ropes different lengths tied a knot and then bent the hook and put it inside the center of that rope I then fed the three sections through the three different holes that we had and tied a knot at the bottom of the base of our little circle piece for the lengths and then cut the rest of the lengths to size for where I wanted the spindles to hang from. Assembling this piece was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but I simply adore how this turned out. It's not the best lighting because it's in my living room in the corner. It's really the only hook I got hanging somewhere, but I feel like I got enough pictures and enough camera angles for you guys to get a feel of just how adorable this is. That's going to be it for this video, people. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. As always, do not forget to check out the Makeover May playlist down in the description box. And until next time, 